Welcome to Keto Life Support, where we make your keto life sustainable, fun, and low stress. I'm Kim Howerton, and I'll be coming to you weekly with some of my keto besties to bring you the practical, real-world keto advice that you need. Quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor, and even if we do have a doctor in the house from time to time, he or she is not your doctor, and nothing we say on this show should be taken as medical advice. Always check in with a trusted medical professional about your own personal medical concerns. Hello and welcome to Keto Life Support. This is Kim Howerton with episode 193. And today we're going to talk about the New Year's review. Yes, yes, I have done this before. I believe I did it last year. This is what I like to do every year about this time, and I think it's a great opportunity for you, if you want to join along, to hear some different ways I end the previous year and start the new year, and might have some recommendations that you do the same. So what is this about? Well, I think we all know that New Year's resolutions are, in general, awful. They tend to be not very practical in that we tend, and by we, I mean uh, people in the world, and especially the United States, I know mostly, don't really follow them. And they're often not well planned out and well thought out. So I recommend instead the New Year's review. So what is that? Let's first start by looking at the previous year. So I usually say either do this the last week of December, you can do it the first week of January, somewhere in that. And if you didn't, you can do it some other time. It's never too late, but you want to first look back before you look forward. So we're going to look back at 2023. For myself, it was a bit of a dumpster fire of year. I don't know what was wrong. It was just one of those off years. And I imagine there are some of you that are like, it was a great year for me. And others of you that were like, I am on team dumpster fire as well. But in either case, it is worthwhile to do some review. So first, let's look at, and and some people like to take out a piece of paper. Some people like to open a document on their computer. If you're a hands-on pen on paper kind of person, you do you. If you're a click, click, click on the keyboard. Likewise, but you're going to ask yourself some questions and it's good to record the answers. Not so much like maybe you're going to keep them for crazy posterity levels, but it's a helpful thought process exercise. So the first thing I'd ask is what went well in 2023 for you? It can be a a theme. There can be a few instances, but at least one thing, preferably more that went well in 2023. This, by the way, just before I start, I do this for just my whole life. And then I focus on specific areas, right? So this is not just about your weight or your fitness or your health, though you could decide just to do a health review if you wanted to. So you can choose to focus this, but I kind of do it across the board these days. So for me, like something that went well was that my brother and I, who we've always gotten along, but we all, we're both busy and we don't make a lot of time for each other. We started having monthly coffee dates. We go out for coffee, talk about what's going on in our lives and spend time together. And that has been really nice in my life. And so that's definitely something that I would put in the win column in terms of my health. You know, this can be challenging. Some of you might say like, oh, I don't know what to say because let's say you gained weight and you lost weight like in the same year. Is it a good thing or a bad thing or does it average out? Is it even? And I would say, go with your gut. You cannot do this wrong. And so what I'm going to say is that by the end of 2023, I was on a really positive trajectory in terms of tackling weight loss again, which made me feel some sense of accomplishment. And while that wasn't my whole experience of 2023, I did do the right things to set myself up for success coming out of 2023, such as going into a reverse diet rather than not sticking with the white knuckling my life right around around weight loss. So 
I set myself up for success coming out of 2023. And that's how I'll put the positive, right? Not everything goes smoothly, but there in the end, what was the positive out of it? So those are two of mine. You know, I could I could go on. I could be like, hey, another great thing was my A1C remained under 5.0 in 2023. That's a big win, right? So those are three possible choices I'd have. And if you're somebody that's like stuck in a bit of a negative mindset around, like you're you're not in a great place right now, I would say the worse space you're in, the more time you want to spend on what actually did go well here. And it can be small, it can be big. It's a way to almost count your blessings. And these are things you're grateful for coming into the end of the year or into the beginning of the new year. Okay. Then once we've got a good solid list on that, by the way, like think about your environment when you're doing this experience of the new year's review, do it in a time when you've got some free time. When, if you've got kids, they're going to be out of the house, or if you, that isn't going to work, go to a coffee shop, have a little headspace around it. Listen to some music you like, but that isn't going to distract you. Have a nice cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Like Set the scene, feel like free and good and open in this space. Okay, then uh, the next thing I look at are things that could use improvement. Now, notice that language. I used to use that language when I was a manager, right? You don't want to be like things you sucked at in 2023. What would I like to improve? What could have been better? What could use improvement? So let's look at that. And an example for me is I was a little inconsistent with my workouts in 2023. And there was even a period where they fell off. So something that I really want to improve in 2024 or that, you know, could use improvement is my workout schedule being consistent with my workout schedule, right? And look for no more than five things that could use improvement. Because I mean, you can get really nitpicky here, right? Go for big rocks, as they say, not small pebbles on the what could use improvement, because you're going to pick from this category, some things you're going to focus on actually improving. We're going to actually put action to these thoughts for 2024, right? So we've got things that went well, things we're grateful for, and then what could use improvement. So here's some optional things. Those are the basics of the review. But you can look at some optional things where if you want to, you can make sure you hit different categories. You, like I said, you can do a single thing, like I'm just going to talk, think about my health in this review, but you could also be like in this review, I'm going to do like one for finances, one for family, one for health, one for um, home environment, right? If you want to, like, what are the important categories for you? There's no one right way to do this. Just go into it knowing what you want. So first, we're going to create the 2024 feeling. So let's say by the end of 2024, I hope that I can say the things that have gone well are X, Y, and Z. What do I want to feel good about by the end of the year? If I had to pick a word that I hope will represent 2024, what will that word be? What am I going to focus on? Maybe it's resilience, strength, family. Like what's the central word that's going to bring me back to my purpose every time I feel a little lost in 2024? What's my word this year? Then I'm going to look at my list of what could use improvement. And I'm going to pick, depending on how big they are, right? Two or three things that I definitely want to see improve. I'm going to pull them over from 2023's list. And I'm going to make a plan so that by the end of 2024, I can put these things on my things that went well list. So let's say on my things I'd like to improve list, things that could use improvement list, I'm moving over a consistent gym schedule. So then I'm going to say by the end of 2024, I want to be able to say that I had a consistent schedule of going to the gym. My plan to make that happen is I'm going to put on the calendar two days a week that I have a non-negotiable gym date. And if I choose to add a third, that's okay. But two 
are non-negotiable and I'm going to go. And if for whatever reason I have to cancel a date, I'm not canceling it, I'm rescheduling it, right? So if I plan to go on Mondays and Thursdays and on Monday I have a dentist appointment, then I will go on Sunday or Tuesday so that I'm staying consistent with my two-day-a-week schedule. Now, some of you might be saying, my consistent level, I want to be hitting three days a week or four days a week, right? That's fine. You do you. But make sure you're committing to something that you can accomplish. So make sure you're not like, you know, going from zero days a week to seven days a week does not give you any wiggle room. But if you said, I'm going to go five days a week, then you have options in terms of, you know, making sure that works out. Maybe another thing on your things I'd like to improve list might be, I want to have more consistent meals through the week where I feel like I'm, I'm punting less, right? Maybe we're like, uh, 2023, I didn't plan my meals well. And so a lot of times I was eating things I didn't think were the best idea, but it was the only thing available because I waited until the last minute. Maybe that didn't go as well as you'd hoped. And so you're like, okay, so in my, the actions I'm going to take to improve that situation is that I'm going to meal plan and grocery shop on Sundays and prep some food so that I know that I always have something appropriate to eat throughout the week. And here's how I'm going to go about that. And if you need containers or you need things to make it happen, but again, do this plan knowing yourself. If you're not the kind of person that's like, I'm going to open a little box in my fridge that I've pre-prepared and eat exactly that, and I don't want to vary at all, that's not really going to suit your personality, then maybe a better option for you is, oh, I cook a bunch of meat and I cook some vegetables if you eat them, and I keep them in the fridge ready to go so I can like assemble my own meal at that meal time without it taking more than five, 10 minutes, but I can change up the combinations and I can change up the sauces and whatever. And so you know, if that's more you, but that's going to take you several steps closer to accomplishing the action you'd like to see, then that's how you plan it for you. Don't plan for other people, plan for yourself, right? Like you are not the mythical you, you are the real you and plan with the real you in mind. So that's the basics of the year in review, just looking at what went well, what could use improvement? How are you going to approach 2024? What's your word of the year? What kind of year would you like to have? And what are the steps you're going to take to improve the things that you're going to focus on this year? And then if you want, if you're like a bit of a visioner, write your vision about 2024. So like by the year's end, these are things I'd like to have accomplished. By the year's end, these are the way that I want to feel about my year. You know, feel into, write a little story about how things are going. and then look at that and read it and say, you know, realistically, have I put in the steps in my plan to get there? Right? Like if your plan is to lose 100 pounds in 2024, but your, you know, things that are going to improve is not an action plan to get to that end, you know, that's not going to get you there. So make sure that your year plan aligns with your actions, right? By the way, I'm not saying that everyone should be able to lose 100 pounds in a year. That's not, that was just like a random thought example. Please don't, don't take that on if that's not appropriate for you. The only people that potentially that could happen to are people who are really outliers in the weight loss world. So just putting that out there just to correct that moment. Anyway, I hope this was helpful for you. I know you, we could go a lot, lot deeper, but I find at this time of year, simplicity may be best. You can always go back in as the year progresses, look at your plan, review it and say, how's it going? Is there something I want to add or change on the list? But going out of 2023 with a good, like clear eyed look at what went well, what could use improvement can help you really understand your feeling about the year and how you can turn it around if it needs turning around or continue the winning streak for 2024. All right. Happy new year to you all. This is your warning and your alert that Keto Unstuck for 2024 January will be starting soon. You can find out more about it by going to kimhowardson.com, which is my website. And if you look at the 
programs tab, you can find Keto Unstuck and learn more about it. I will include a direct link in the show notes. So you can just click on that as well if you're not listening while running around. And I hope to see you in that program. It's specifically designed for people that maybe aren't seeing the kind of success that they really want to see. And we're going to come up with the appropriate way for you to turn it around. There's lots of personalization. I work with people to make sure that the decisions that we make about how to make their weight loss stick and improve are ones that will work for the real them. So I hope to see you if you need some help in my program, Keto Unstuck, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Keto Life Support. Want more information? Want show notes? Want to suggest a topic? Just head over to ketolifesupport.com. That's where all that kind of thing can go on. By the way, I have a request. If you could go to your podcast host and hit subscribe, we would really, really appreciate it. And what would be even more awesome is if you could write a review. And what would be even more awesome than that is if you could write like a really flattering review. Just asking, you know, you do you. All right. So thanks so much for joining us. I'm thrilled that you're part of the Keto fam. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.